Hi everyone, welcome back to Dolan Studios. Today we're going to paint a, a version of this flower here. It, it might look familiar, it's on the worksheet that was handed out the other night. To do this, we're going to need the following. Okay, as far as paint goes, these are the colors I'm going to be using. I'm going to be using a, a very, very rich mixture of purple very rich um, and we won't be using a lot uh, but what we are using is going to be very rich likewise yellow uh, gamboge we're going to be using uh, that um, very rich if not straight pigment as far as uh, our green values we're going to be using a, a mid value green I found my green by mixing dark green, I think that's in a tube in your box, with the gamboge yellow to create a yellow green that I like. We're going to be painting on a 4x6 sheet of paper today. I'm not going to tape it down. I'm going to be using, uh, picking up and moving it about. I'm painting on my board which is elevated at a good angle today. I'm going to be using gravity fairly often. We're going to be using a 4 inch round brush and a half inch flat brush. And I think that's gonna be all that you'll need. Get it together uh, and we'll start working on it. Okay. The first thing that I do for this painting is decide where I'm gonna put my flower and I like right there. Okay. And in that spot I draw a small star. Okay. Five pointed star doesn't have to be even, it's just a guide mark. We probably will never see it again. Okay. So, we're going to paint our first flower petal. All the rest are painted like this. And, uh, or at least the, the system of painting them are the same, but each one will be a little different because this is watercolor and everything in watercolor can be a little different. So. Here comes the first one. What we're going to do is we're going to put a little bit of that uh, intense purple color into a small puddle next to this star. Now, I don't have my brush fully loaded. I don't want too much to escape on me. So maybe just the tip of it or a quarter of that brush is loaded with a deep purple, deep, deep purple paint. I'm going to put this dot right next to the star, right in this position, and it's going to be a couple millimeters big. You can judge it by the, the size of my paintbrush. Now this is a, a full puddle, okay, lots in it, lots of concentrated purple. The next thing we do is clean our brush, tap it off, stick it in clean water, give it one good tap. Maybe another. Okay, to paint this petal, what we do is we touch the tip of our brush to the side of this puddle, and then we start drawing it side to side and back towards us at the same time until we achieve the size of petal that we want. Are we ready? Here we go. Touch, side, 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 side. I like that. There's a lot going on there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to clean my brush. I'm going to dry it up. There's lots of water in there. I'm going to start sucking it up a little. And in the process of sucking it up, I'm going to push the darker purple back to where I want it to be, which in this case is back up towards the top. keeping my eye on it because gravity is still pulling it back. I'll push it up a little bit more and we'll let gravity bring it down a little bit while I go off and get a brush tip full of almost pure gamboge. Doubt you can see that, but there it is. draw this right straight through. 
can stop. And I'm just going to let that work by itself for a while. In the meantime, I'm going to clean my brush, dry my brush. My brush is dry. I'm going to fan it out. I'm going to see if it's possible to maybe lighten this area at all. Nope. That purple's pretty well set. Okay, that's petal number one. All right, let's turn her over. I'm gonna zoom in on this one so that you can get a better look at it. Let's see what's going on. We can do better than that. I'm sure of it. I'm gonna skip this a point in the star, this notch in the star, and go to this one here. So I'm going to turn that so it faces downhill. I am going to get my deep purple paint. And here we go, right there. Lots of, lots in that puddle. Hopefully it's mostly pigment. Or a lot of pigment in there. Purple's a dark color, it's hard to tell. All right, clean my brush. A load of clear, fresh water. Touch, side, 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 side. The purple stay in put this time. Don't panic, finish your petal. All right, look at all that water, that's beautiful. Okay. I'm going to dry, clean and dry my brush off, and I'm going to start using a clean dry brush to push some of this back uphill. It'll soak some of the water up. I want to get some purple over to this side, so I'm going to push a little of it over to there. Right now, so much of this water and pigment is floating on the surface that I don't have to touch the paper to do this. I'm just kind of squeegeeing it away. I think what I want to do is I want to lighten this portion of the petal, so I'm going to dry my brush again, flatten it out to give me a wide surface. And I'm going to just pull that uphill, do it again, and do it again. There we go. It looks like a lot, but it'll even itself out as gravity pulls everything down. We might even lose it. Okay, now before this dries up too much, let's go get our little bit of yellow. Let's put a little bit more water in it this time. Just a tip of water with that real strong yellow. And I'm just gonna put a line right through the heart of that purple. Yellow can have this effect on some colors. It can push the color away that you're putting it into. Okay, that's not too bad. Not too bad at all. All right. Now, for our third petal, where do we put it? What we're going to do is we're going to put it right here. We're going to put it next to our first petal. What I'm hoping is that this edge here has dried enough that it will withstand whatever it is that I'm about to do next to it and or on top of it. If it does, and it's not a tragedy. Uh, if you want to ensure that it does, then you can wait for it. Uh, but I'm just going to move on and see what happens. So, back to our purple. And back to another highly concentrated dab of purple. Oh, let's bring it down. Here we go. We're zoomed in. And like I said, we are going to go next to this one here. This was our first. And hopefully this edge is dry. All right. In goes our purple into our puddle. All right. Clean the brush. Fresh water. Touch. Swipe. 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 Let's bring some purple over to this way, swipe, get our leaf shape, clean the brush, damp brush, gonna pull some water out to there. I'm going to leave that white, I'm going to try and leave that white spot as a little highlight. So 
I'm going to start sucking up this water here, this purple. Start soaking some of that up. I'm going to start soaking some up over here and over here. I like that. I'd like a little more purple down the center, so I'm going to go get just a very touch of purple. Oh, almost nothing there. And I'm just going to draw a line out through here. Like so. Almost nothing there. Okay. We happy with that? I think I'm happy with that. Going to go back to my yellow. A little bit on the tip of my brush. And I'm going to bring in a vein of yellow right through what I just painted. Let that play around a little bit. I'm going to actually pick that little bit up. more concentrated back here. Dab it in and we'll see what happens. Okay. So we've done three petals. We're gonna let those dry. And I am going to start working on our stem and some leaves. Okay, now if you mix up your green you're ready to go. If you haven't mixed up your green go do that and join me back here. I'm going to shift this up a little, turn my paper straight, and I am going to work through a stem and two leaves. All right, using a mid grade, mid value green, I'm going to load up my number four round. I'm going to come right in here into this notch in here between the petals, kind of pointing at the center of my flower and coming down. I'm going to just swoop it around like that. There is no right or wrong at this. Uh, just whatever feels right to you. All right. Now, what we're going to need is our number or our half inch flat brush. Clean that up, make sure nothing's in it. Going to come up gonna get it get some green paint in it same wash exact same wash as you just used all right so this is how we paint leaves with this particular brush in one motion in, in, in a motion side to side you're gonna take three steps you're gonna move on the tip then you're gonna lay it down on its side and then you're gonna slowly pick it back up onto its tip and then pick it up off the paper let me show you what I mean I'll describe it as I do it I'm on the tip of my paintbrush the yet the front edge I make contact with my stem I draw it out riding on the edge now I'm going to lay it down on its side I continue moving. I'm going to then start standing it back up onto its edge and slowly remove it from the paper. And there is our leaf. Let me try that again. And I will try it from the other side because I have difficulty painting this from the other side. Okay. Let's see if we can zoom in. Get a better look at it. So starting on the tip of our brush and always in motion we are going to touch, we're pulling, I'm going to turn it down, flatten it out onto its side and we're still pulling and I'm going to slowly stand it up, we're still slowly pulling and I remove and there's my leaf. Voila! Okay. Now, practice those leaves before you do this to your flower, maybe off onto a side piece of paper, a scrap page. Do that a couple hundred times and you'll get real good at it. Um, these first couple ones might be a little shaky, don't get discouraged. All right, let's switch back to our round brush. Uh, our stem, 
obviously has dried enough to be able to withstand another layer. You can see that by this last leaf that we put in. These two are the exact same colors, it's just the one on top of the other. Now this we didn't intend, but that's fine. It works perfectly well for us. We're going to utilize this effect up here by painting in just a little bit of shadow on our stem. And I'm going to go on the right side and I'm just going to paint a, another line. I'm going to bring it to this point because in my eye, I see this leaf, uh, this, the attachment of this leaf coming in front and attaching in the front of this stem. So. I can't see the edge anymore because this is in front of it. I could see it over here because this leaf has passed it by. So we'll continue that. Did that make sense? We can't paint this lighter. We can only paint what's behind it darker. That's the nature of watercolor. Uh, it's a blessing and a curse. To give that stem or that leaf a little bit more shape down here. I'm going to take some water out of my or some paint out of my brush and just kind of let that slowly fade behind that and maybe add another bit back here just ever so slightly touching the paper to make this little lighter value stand out and make it look like part of the leaf. Okay, now we're going to give some shape to our leaf. Now, because gravity has been working, I can see that gravity has pulled all of the excess color and paint that I left in this leaf probably down to this point. That's fine. I'll work with that. Maybe let's picture, let's picture our leaf cupped up like this, like my hand, so it's cupped. And we can use that dark portion as a shadow that we'll f we can feather it out towards this end and give us the illusion of being cupped like my hand. So how do we do that? Let's take a little of our green, the same green. I'm going to just kind of put it right here. I only put it here because I will now start working with it. I'm going to work at it though with a clean damp brush. All the paint I need I've just delivered to my paper. I shouldn't need any more. And I'm just going to dab at it, pull at it while it's still sitting on the surface, hardly touching the paper. And I'm going to slowly, slowly bring it down and add a second layer to this. I'm then going to dry my brush off and do some feathering action on this end. That's putting it on, taking it off, spreading it out, pulling it back, whatever it needs. This is a, a work, a fluid work. How's that? Now, as you remember, gravity will help and pull some down over time. And we'll let it do that while we come over here and look at this one. Okay, so this leaf is coming off the front of our stem. I don't think I like that. I think I want it to come off the back of our stem. Can I change that? Let me dab a wet, clean brush on that little line. I've reactivated that second layer, leaf layer. I'm just slowly spreading it out, eliminating that line. I wish I could show you that again. Remind me to do that at class. Okay. This leaf here, I'm gonna have cupped like, like uh, well, like this. I don't know if you can see that. Okay, so this edge here is gonna be this edge here. This cup portion is gonna be the palm of my hand. The far edge of the leaf will be where my thumb is. Um, this is the closest part to us, so we need to ensure that this is the lightest part of our leaf. And in order to do that, we need to back paint it. We need to paint, paint a darker value behind it. So, going into here, here's our leaf. This, right here, this edge, 
is the light edge that I want to be able to see. Unfortunately, it's dark right there. I'm not worried about it. But anyways, this whole edge, I want this whole edge to be lighter than what's behind it because that will allow the edge to appear to be in front. I hope that makes sense. What I'm doing now is I'm just getting a, maybe a half load of our green wash. And I'm going to just deliver it to the paper and put it where I want it to be. Or, or I'll put some up there. And I'm, then I will come back and I will start moving it to where I want it to be. How's that? That makes more sense. First thing I'm going to do, though, is I'm going to define the light area that I want to save. I'm going to just paint that edge right right along that edge and I think we're still gonna see that light edge and then all of a sudden it disappears okay so we have delivered the paint probably all the paint we need now what I've done is I've just cleaned any excess green out of my brush I'm keeping it damp I'm gonna pull it back work against gravity I pull it up, gravity pulls it back, and between the two of us, we come up with something that works. I'm going to dry up some water because I like the blend that I see now. Okay. I continue to dry it up. I'm going to really dry my brush and try and soak up anything excess on this far edge. Okay, and just as a final guarantee that we've highlighted that front lip of the leaf enough, I'm just going to bring a tip load of that green wash right back here, just ever so little of it, just touching the paper with a little bit of it, and I'm not going to, I'm just going to leave that alone. Our leaf was still wet enough that the last load of water that I put in should dry with a soft edge. And this is still a hard edge because we haven't touched it yet. It's, we're still painting on a dry paper way out here. So we're going to leave that the way it is. I think we're done. I'm going to come back and paint in some vein lines in a few minutes. Okay, sound like a plan? Let's go back to our flower. What we're going to do is we're going to put in our remaining flower petals, just like we did the first three. So I'm just going to have at it, try and save a little video time. Um, if I run into any serious issues, I will certainly sing out, but otherwise I will just give my voice a rest here. Make sure I'm in the right spot. on the other side of this. bit of paper towel, clean dry paper towel. I'm going to dab the edge of this leaf or this petal. Very good.
and you want to pick up paint or water quickly or in a larger area then your brush can accommodate a paper towel as was mentioned the other night is a very useful tool. making sure there's enough purple in that water. No two are alike. This paper was this this flower petal was dry when I put the yellow on. Not so dry over here. Very wet when I put the yellow one over here. So they're all random. Um, I just moved along. I wasn't paying too close attention because I'm looking for random action here. You can always come back and touch things up, but that's detail that I don't want to lose myself in at this point. So what we need to do is we need to finish off that center. And what we're going to do is just a, a, a um, wet in wet application of assorted colors. So I'm going to dry this up and I will be right back with you. So that last petal that we just did is dry. We're going to just put a, a lot of color into the center of this. Try not to disturb that purple too much, but we'll probably end up doing a little disturbing. To do this, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to get all of these white areas wet. As I do this, my first application water will sit on the surface. Okay. I'm okay with that. In fact, what I'm going to do is I'm going to lower my board so that puddle doesn't run away on me. It just sort of stays put. Okay, grabbing a little bit of that crimson that I mentioned earlier. All I need is just the tip of my paint with barely and basically a, a straight mixture of crimson and what I want to do is I just want to kind of just get some color in there. I picked four. I don't know why I picked four. Okay. 
I'm going to grab a little of our gamboge straight pigment. I think I'll put one of those right in the center. Straight pigment. Not too bad. Not too bad. Because I have it out and it's readily available, I'm going to drop in some lemon yellow to see what it might do. Okay, that's a fair bit of color. I'm going to dry that real quick because I want to paint on top of it, so I'll be right back. There we are now. Some random texture to our flower center can be achieved by putting in darker values. And I think in this case, a combination of our purple and a little bit of crimson might look kind of nice. The color that I'm choosing is, whoop, I'm sorry, this one, too much purple, too much purple for me, here we go, that's what we're using, okay, so here we go. I'm going to go right into the center of that and I'm just going to make some random marks around my lighter crimson colors just to give that texture there. I also probably want to take out these white spots. They don't add anything to this. I'm going to cross a line here, there, take the, out the white here, there's a little white there. Okay, I'm gonna, I think I'm just going to take some straight purple now, do the same thing, dab it here and there, let it play, and I think I'm good with that right now. I think I'll dry my brush off, tap around here and suck up randomly suck things up. There we go. I think that's probably done. I mean, there's a lot more we can do to it, but it gives you an idea. Play with the colors, play with the shape of your petals, play with uh, all the little washes that we just did, um, and enjoy yourself. Give it a shot. I hope it works out for you. Let me know. Thanks. Talk to you soon.